He's gonna flip a switch. He's gonna flip a switch. YouTube, right now, we are live. All right, so Hello. for everyone that's here for the very first time, um, I just want to let you know what we're doing here. Apple Byte, extra crunchy. It's our audio recorded version of the podcast. What we do is we do it a few days after uh, an Apple Byte episode. New news comes out. We are able to expand on more topics because the show is like five minutes and you can only talk so much, but we also get to interact with you guys. We will uh, be taking a voicemail question. Uh, we will be referring to you guys to take guys and gals to take questions as well. Um, is the first of all on Periscope? Is the stream looking good? Because last week everyone said it was too ch too chunky. It was chuggy. A Gene Fox Jr. A Gene Fox Jr. What up, Gene? I know you, Gene. All right, good. Everyone said it's good. I'm good. I switched over to a LTE instead of Wi-Fi. Is this playing an ad on a, the YouTube stream right now? Live stream friends, what's up? Are. Thanks We're for coming YouTube. out too here. Hello. It's All right, there we go. Check. Someone's asking where's where's Kane and Brittany. I don't. I, not, not, on, not on not on this channel. <laughs> I'm on the wrong channel. <laughs> Terrence McKelvey up in the house. I see you, T. What's going on, bro? Okay. Thanks for all. Thanks for the love, Dcast seventeen. All right. Uh, a lot of people up in here. I think we're gonna we're gonna start in about another minute and a half. Oh, here you, we go. What's up? What's up? I got I just got the YouTube um, chat room. Oh, you got the YouTube chat room. Why don't you? Why, Where's you, Dollar and Muffin? Someone's what's asking. Up, what's <laughs> up? Stephen Beecham running the show. You guys don't understand. Stephen Beecham is the man here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try and do this every One week. Well, not we're trying to. We are doing this every week, right? We're gonna yeah. If the studio, I mean, we gotta figure out a we schedule. Gotta figure for out the, the studio for the studio because there are people in here. Come on, really? What else? Fridays. Are people? Is there any other studio that can get over 350 people on Periscope hanging out with us right now? No. <laughs> Move, go, get on out of there. All you scopers are dope. Uh, John, Jonah, I can't even read this. Jonah Sack 13 says, how long have I been with CNET? I think I've been with CNET now for, let's see, I technically started at the end of 2008 when I was 13 years old. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> 2008, that's No, nice. yeah. But, but uh, yeah, you're almost. But it was eight the end years, of it was the end years? of 2008, so I think like seven years, seven years or so. It's pretty good. It's a good run. It's a pretty good run. I've been. I did two. Th I started in 04, and then laid off in 08. Yeah. And then two years off. Oh yeah, that's right. You <laughs> that was that was the, the dumbest. That was the dumbest mistake ever. <laughs> it was great, man. I, learned I know. I know. Golf. You learned. If you guys, if you guys are down with what we're doing, I always yeah. like to ask for hearts. You guys, just tap that screen. <laughs> tap that screen. Ha 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 ha. Hearts. People on YouTube are like, what the Heart. hell is going on here? Heart. We're live on all platforms. <laughs> Worldwide, all platforms. Periscope on your phone. We got more viewers on YouTube than we do on live stream. Uh oh. Uh oh. The battle. What's up, the... live stream? I can't even, am, I, am I blind? I can't even see the number of uh, viewers on YouTube. Where's the show that? Uh, I think you have to scroll down. They, they, they changed the format of the page now. You have to scroll oh, who down. Who cares? I, lo I love that people are hanging out with us. Look at everyone in Periscope just waiting around for the show to start at 379. So let me explain this uh, for everyone that has just joined in. This is our podcast, Apple Byte Extra Crunchy. What we do is we talk about the news, the latest news. We add more information. Uh, we also have more commentary. It's all about everything Apple, obviously, good and bad. It's why you all are here. We also are going to really make an effort to answer your questions and interact with you. So if you guys can ask questions uh, Steven will, can kind of be checking that out on the YouTube, uh, chat room. Periscope can sometimes be hard because I'm looking right at the screen, but I have to kind of zoom in close, but we want to also keep the integrity of this for our listeners who will be downloading this on, from iTunes or downcast or your different podcast tools. So that, that's kind of why we're, we, we have, we want to cater to the audience, but we really want to create a video element so you guys could be a part of the show. Yeah. We're almost we're almost hit. We're we're just at three ninety seven on the scope. It's yo. just so easy for us to just do video. So why not? Yeah, we're why? gonna do an audio podcast. Let's do video. Why too. the hell not? Why not? Why not, man? Stephen Beecham. If you guys don't know him, you need to get to know him. He is extraordinary. He's the one man director, show producer, audio guy, Skype guy, camera guy, every sound effects guy. This room is my domain. This room is your oyster. I know every computer in this room closely. <laughs> in, very intimately. Oh, weird. What's up? Livestream just played an ad in the middle of our broadcast. How dare they? That's weird. Do they do they know do they know what people are here for? <laughs> people are here for the show. They ain't here for no ads. 
Okay, uh, before we before we start, let's show some love on Periscope. Tell me where you all are from. We've got to represent for everybody on YouTube. Hey, Stephen, let tell me what people are calling out. You know, we're doing shout okay. outs across the world. All right, Massachusetts, UK. Okay, hun, this is so fast. Scotland, Wales, Houston, Texas, Poland, Poland, Gabe, wow. Sal- Salcedo, Arizona. I'm trying to read your names. It's going so fast. Texas, Crystal Lake, Illinois, Denmark, London, London. Oh, Honduras, Poppy Beaton. I can't. This is so fast. On the toilet. From the toilet. <laughs> we got Peru up in here, too. You guys, nothing but love for you. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. There's a d- delay on YouTube, so I haven't seen anyone claim Tallahassee. High Tech 17, Sacramento. I know you, High Tech. Aqua Shaki, one, two, three, LOL. Trinidad and Tobago. Bob Smaita, Smalta. Dang, it's so hard to read that. Those users, that text on there is so small. Okay, beach We got Cut- Cutter, LA. Cut- Cutter? What the Milky that? Way. Ontario, Utah, Canada, oh, Connecticut, friend. Manchester. Wow. People that are first checking this out, they're like, uh, why the LA, Buffalo, this? Sweden. West Palm Beach up in here, Brooklyn. Israel in the house. India. Johans Brown, I see you in Brooklyn, Johans. North America, which is where we are, Brian, right now. North North America. Wisconsin. Hey, you know the song? North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Syrian and Istanbul. Yo, excuse me, what was that? Michael? Hi, Michael Morris 9 wants to see that. Michael C. Morris 9 wants to see the Apple Watch. It ran out of charge, dog. I forgot to charge it last night. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I don't use it that much. That's why it's like, ah, oh, whatever. That's okay, funny. should we get the show started? Because people are waiting. Are y'all ready for this? Are you guys been waiting? Like, if you guys want us to just start the darn show, just say start the darn show. We'll get it started. Someone's asking me to turn up the volume. Turn up. Is it turn up on you or just in general? Turn up the volume on the uh, on the YouTube? live stream. Let's on the see. live stream. Can you guys on a start the dang show? Start the darn show. Everybody say start the darn show. Start it. Start already. Okay. Okay, let's do it. Ready? Oh yeah, hey, you you remember you have to do your you got it. You, oh, okay. you 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 have to remember your hype man part. Do you remember? I will I will, I will remember it. Okay. You guys won't be able to hear the music <laughs> on Periscope. Uh YouTubers and live streamers you will. So just roll with us. You know how we do. Okay. Here we okay. Go. I'm ready, bro. You just revealed all of our secrets. <laughs> all of our secrets. From the top of the CBS Interactive Building in San Francisco, it is the Apple Bite with Brian Tong. That was so tame. <laughs> no, I wanted hype. From the, <laughs> I can't do it. I just, I just, <laughs> What's I up, just everybody? Scream so loud. I know, I know, I know. It's okay to scream loud. It's okay if you want to be a screamer. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. This is episode four for all of you that have been hanging out with us. My name is Brian Tong. Running the show, Mr. Stephen Beecham. Good morning, everyone. Amazing as usual. Afternoon, whatever time you're in. Afternoon now. Just for all of you that are listening for the first time, you just kind of clicked on that podcast. You're like, what is this? What is it? Maybe you know about the album by. Maybe you don't know. You guys can check it out. Uh, here's the link where you can jump onto it on iTunes because a lot of pretty much most people are like are going to iTunes to download their podcast these days. Although I use Downcast also, I dig that a lot. We use that. But what this show is here for is everything Apple, good, bad. We know you love to talk about it. We want to hear what you think about it. We have multiple ways for you guys to get in touch. Right now, we are streaming live worldwide. 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 We've got people checking in from all over the world right now. We got Periscope. We got... There's like eight ways to watch the show right now. (laughs) Periscope, YouTube, live stream, my stream, you stream. No, aside. No, no, you stream. Sorry. (laughs) Anyways, let's just get into it because people are wondering, uh, are you guys going to actually start the show yet? Let's do it. Okay, Beecham. First story, I think this one is a shaker and mover. Apple is in talks to launch its own virtual network service in the U.S. and Europe. Okay, you've heard of MVNOs where you have some of these third-party carriers that license or you know they're, they buy space, some of the cellular spectrum from the major carriers – and then put phones on them. Uh, like, for example, Cricket Wireless is one of them. Okay. Is, yeah. It would be like an MVNO. We ha- So check this out. Apple is experimenting and looking to do this. And why is this important? Well, recently, we know that Apple has put in uh, that 
universal sim or they're working on a universal sim as well with cell phone carriers mm. to put in their phones right we've mm -hmm. seen it in the ipad i believe at least the ipad air 3 i think the ipad air 2 had it where if you could slot sign on to from multiple carriers from a single device you didn't have to buy a sprint version a t-mobile version an at&t version so all these pieces are starting to come together if apple does accomplish this and they're looking to do this this is not a given yet but they're looking to be a virtual carrier imagine paying for your cell phone bills directly through Apple, directly through iTunes. But I think this is the hottest thing that could happen. If Apple's able to get Spectrum from these telecoms, let's say AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and let's say you're in an area, and let's say you have one of these universal SIMs, it would give you the ability to switch over to the best carrier in the best location. Hmm. So it's multiple carriers. You can Mul just it would get support, any carrier you want. It would support multiple carriers because Apple would be buying That's this crazy. space from the multiple carriers, and they would have the tech if this universal SIM goes through to enable you to get the best signal from whichever carrier they license space from. See, when you when I, when I was first looking at this article, it made me seem – I felt like they were positioning themselves to become a carrier themselves. Which they, in essence, would. Basically, right. They would become so, a carrier. So, of course, there would be a fee for this. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah, this ain't free. No. This ain't, this ain't no uh, iOS upgrade for free. No, you're going to be paying for this. Yeah. <laughs> but they would act and serve as their own carrier, but I could definitely see the benefits from this. Yeah. I mean, totally. I like, don't know if you guys like this. For people, One-stop shop, Apple. Every, every, they control your lives if you're okay with that. For people that are watching uh, on Periscope and YouTube, just let us know what you guys think. I'm, I'm curious if your gut reaction is this is a dope idea. I like this. It could be very interesting. Hey, any more competition is a good thing. If Always. all the companies are competing, the price is going to go down. That's a good thing. We well, already, uh, for example, with Apple's voicemails at the moment, when you leave a voicemail, they're, uh, they're stored on the carrier. Because they had to work with the carriers in partnership for visual voicemail. If, if you recall, visual voicemail didn't, wasn't on Verizon initially. It was only on AT&T uh -huh. because of the technology that they had. Now it is on Verizon, uh -huh. but the voicemails are actually stored on the carrier side. So now Apple could also be storing those voicemails. I know some people are like, I don't know if I want that or not. But in a weird way, it might be good that they're overseeing all of this. I don't know who do is, you trust. Is, is more. That, are those the voicemails you get when you leave a message on your phone, yes. or when you send a text and you do the voice? The ones that you leave on text. your phone. Okay. Anyways, big news. They're looking. They're in talks to launch their own service. Mosabi on uh, Periscope just said, "Brian Tong." <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned that. Mosabi. Mo. Well, it was like it was like a two words. Mosabi. <laughs> The like chemo sabi is that short yeah, for yeah. chemo sabi? Maybe, okay. maybe. Now these days everyone's <laughs> shortening things. I th I think this is a genius idea. I would sign up for it if the ability. For example, when you're in Las Vegas, AT and T sucks in Las Vegas. Verizon kicks booty. In AT and T Vegas. sucks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. He said that. I'm not afraid. I invite any AT and T representative to ride across any bridge in the Bay Area with me and see if you can keep a signal on your phone. Even on the BART, right? Going oh, the it doesn't tunnels. mean no. you, you get a black phone and just the screen goes black. We're talking about here locally in the San Francisco Bay Area, yeah. so your results may differ depending on where you all live. <laughs> <laughs> but we know what our results are. Anyways, Apple and talks to be um, MVNO. I love this idea if they can make it work. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. This will be years in the making, but it's something that could happen maybe in a couple years or so. We will find out. That was a report from Business Insider, so uh, we'll see how that rolls on. The biggest kind of rumor stuff, photos over the weekend, iPhone 6S, parts, display assembly, renderings, everything you can think of leaked out online. Uh, this is for people that are watching, but also I can just kind of tell you through this. CAD drawings and renderings show off and confirm indeed what has been rumored by, from other sources that the new iPhone success will indeed be 0.2 millimeters thicker. Now, what does that mean for us? Good thing. Most of our cases should still work with this phone, right? So you won't That's have to good, buy a brand. Yeah. That's a good thing, right? That's great. I hate find, having to find a case for every new phone. That's a good Apple. <laughs> That's a good Apple. All right. <clears throat> also, though, it leads more credence to the fact that we 
are expecting and potentially going to see forced touch on this phone. This is the technology with the long press. We were talking about it. Remember, I was yeah, like, yeah. we were talking about it in a show before yeah. where you could have to physically press hard on the screen and enable you to get other aspects of control. That's cool. Other aspects. It's going to open up doors for so many different types of apps. Apps, games, everything. So you guys can check out all the leaks online and everything you've seen, but the, you really can't ignore the fact that also with the timing of this, the iPhone 6S, around the time of when they need to confirm the parts and the actual form factors and the final designs before they go into production, this is the time. This is why we're seeing the leaks. Apple has doubled down on security. Right, <laughs> right, Tim? You, you're... Yeah. Tim is all over that. Are we going to hear about someone like stealing a prototype from some like yeah <laughs> some bar in San Francisco? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And speaking of, you know, we're going to take a little quick tangent. Speaking of San Francisco and Apple, everyone has probably heard or don't yeah. know that Apple. It's official. We can talk about it. There's nothing secretive about it. Apple is planning to actually rent out space. In this building, in the CBS yes. Interactive building crazy. in Soma, in the San Francisco area, we don't know which division it is. We don't know what department it is. Uh, I'm not on their payroll yet. All we know is that they're going to be on, what, the second and third floors, and we are locked out of there. We can't even completely get locked We're out locked of out of it, it now. I think, I think I know what top secret division is going to actually be here. Finance. <laughs> <laughs> HR. Yeah. HR. It would be cool if, like, marketing was there and we could see if they could make, like, cool iPhone they, commercials around our building. They aren't going to do any of that. <laughs> but trust me, I will be knocking on the door. I will try and sneak through them, find out what I can. But Apple is moving into our building there. Everyone first thought it was, like, some conflict of interest. It's just renting space. It's somewhere like $66 per square foot of space wow. to rent in San Francisco. Oh, my God. That's, like, millions of dollars Yeah, for two floors of space. Crazy. Pretty crazy. So – just wanted to throw that out there just to educate the people out there what's going on in that. But let's also talk and kind of jump back to the iPhone 6S. Uh, Digitimes, sometimes right, sometimes wrong. They like to make up stuff too, let's be honest. But uh, with the launch of the upcoming or so-called iPhone 6S or 6S Plus coming up, they re the report re claims that Apple supply chain partners have started shipping force touch panels in limited quantities in June before ramping up production of the pressure-sensitive models this Whoa. month. Is this the right one? This is the right yeah, one. Yeah, sure. Right. Okay, good. This is good. This looks good. I have this other one, too. What's this? Those are just parts. Okay. You know, just parts. <laughs> we always see these every year. It's funny. Other Apple iPhone news. This is something that's going to be super useful. This will actually probably make your Apple Watch a little more, a lot more useful. Uh, according to Business Insider, once again, getting a nice little scoop, chunk of information, Apple is preparing to launch a voicemail service that will use Siri to transcribe your messages. Oh, that's cool. So you can type a message and she'll read it to... Well, here, it's actually the other way around. Say someone calls you uh -huh. and you... I have some, I honestly sometimes just don't listen to voicemails. Do you listen to every voicemail? I, dude, I miss them. I, right? I'm the same right? thing, yeah. I don't, like, I don't listen. Eh, I'll call them later. <laughs> I know you all out there do the yeah. same exact thing, right? So this Apple is testing this right now, this service with employees that would use Siri to answer your calls if you're away or you can't get your phone, and then transcribe them into text. Oh, I, that's great. And then display them on your phone. That's cool. So you could just read what the person said. I will give them credit. Siri is a lot more accurate than it has been. Yeah, you know, T but it's funny, though, 42, you, just, always, you do have to fix things when you, when you transcribe on, you know, if you're sending a text, you do have to fix a lot of words. You do. But you do. it happens, you know. It's, so it's, it'll it's say, expected. <laughs> I, I don't even know what words I could say. Tub Tub forty two on Periscope just wrote z z z z z z. The funny thing about it is that dude or that girl is going to use this the most. He's like, oh, who cares? I I think it's super useful. Yeah. So they're testing amongst their employees. You know, again, we don't answer our voicemails all the time. That's just human nature. They're testing this internally. They believe that this feature is expected to come out in 2016 sometime. So we're still ways away from there. Somewhere in iOS 10. I think I would use that. Yeah, I would definitely use it. But you would pick up every phone call from your wife, right? Like everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's smart. She just texts me. She oh, she, text oh, you're all you're all you're all text based now. Oh yeah, fully. Yeah, that's 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 actually probably kind of the way that thing works, huh? Yeah. All right, guys, check this out. Probably one of the more exciting advancements in technology. 
yeah, there's a there's a lot of cool stuff that happens. Maybe not be the sexiest thing. We talked about Skylake processors last week. Uh, the improvement from Intel performance, graphics import performance, battery life improvement. Well, check this out. This is another piece of the puzzle moving forward with all this tech that's coming out. Intel and Micron recently unveiled a new memory class. They're calling it 3D Crosspoint. All right, and this is this is juicy. It's 1,000 times faster and more durable than the current NAND flash storage that we all use in our mobile devices and solid-state drives. It's the first new memory chip to come to the market in 25 years. Wow. It's 10 times denser than the current DRAM chips used in computers, which means more data can be stored closer to the processor and accessed quickly. A thousand times faster, my friends. 3D crosspoint RAM. This is, again, a partnership with Intel and Micron. This is insane. The initial capacity is 128 gigs. On across, that little chip right yeah, there. Across two memory layers. Wow. Future generations, they'll be able to increase that as well. Uh, it's a really nascent technology, though. We're not going to see this rolling out anytime soon. Uh, there's going to be they're, – they're talking about how at least maybe initially we'll see some of this 3D cross-point RAM be used in conjunction with current memory because of the cost involved. Uh, it, this is maybe a couple of years out, but this is what we're talking about. We haven't seen, again, a memory advancement like this in 25 years. I think this is one of those things that it will def will elevate performance across machines. Not A lot of times you see like a 30% gain yeah. or a 50% gain. <clears throat> we're talking a lot more than that, 200 300% type gains. That's crazy. So I love this. It's not coming to your iMac. It's not coming to your MacBook Pro. But again, give it a few years. This is just kind of that stuff that's coming down the line that we should be excited about, but also just to educate you and let you guys know what is happening out there and what's coming down the line. I did talk about the iMac just really briefly, and according to KGI, they're expecting an update for the iMac line sometime in the third quarter of this year. So I guess actually third quarter of this year is pretty much it's end of right September. Now, right? Yeah. September. September. Yeah. I expect that we'll see some more computer upgrade announcements just because Skylake is rolling out. Uh, Apple looks like they're skipping the Broadwell line of processors, only putting a few of their models and just waiting it out until Skylake is available. We'll see if that's true. Or if Broadwell becomes more readily available for them, they might go Broadwell. But just the way that they're plotting this out, I've got to imagine we might even see some computers this year leapfrog to Skylake, which is what you want to wait for. Either way, people that keep on asking me every week, when should I buy a machine? Right now, this fall time, just wait till their announcements and then make a decision. Don't do anything. I think else. that sounds smart plan there. Is that is that the smart thing to do? Yeah. Would you do that? I would definitely, if I knew they were coming out with some totally different, new, faster plan or platform, I would definitely wait. Like I, you know, like I'm waiting for the next iPhone Seven. Woo! What? <laughs> I thought you were gonna get a six. No, nah, I don't know. Still on the five. Okay, I think we need to take a, just a, a generic poll here. If, if Steven has an iPhone 5, how many of you think Steven should upgrade to an iPhone 6S if that phone is coming out sometime this year? I think you get a lot of hearts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hearts. All right, just to also kind of update you guys on what's happening with uh, Apple and their BMW or the Apple car. You know, you, we've heard all about Apple working on making their own version of a car, like their own I guess I don't want to call it a wannabe Tesla, but they want to get into that game, right? Yeah. First of all, when you hear the idea of Apple making a car, what do you think, Peach? I think it's going to be very sleek, stylish, uh, sexy, easy <laughs> to use, <laughs> and you're going to be able to plug your iPhone into it. <laughs> I hope. I mean, yeah. I've seen some of those drivers out there. I hope they make – I don't know if driving is going to be easier to use. Well, you know, it's gonna like be open your door. Gonna, everything's going to be like play school. It's going to look like, like play school. <laughs> you're going to walk up. Your car door will unlock because it's, yeah. it talks. You use your Apple Watch as your key. Totally. So, exactly. Dude, if you have an Stuff Apple like Watch, that. you've got to get an Apple car as an accessory you're to the Apple Watch. You're ahead of the game. Watch. Exactly. Yeah. By far, that's the smart thing to do. Now, Apple and BMW, according to this report from Reuters, Tim Cook went over to BMW's headquarters last year with Apple senior executives and toured BMW's factory to learn how they manufactured the i3 electric car, but also some of the tech they were looking at is how they uh, made the body and the chassis of this car, mm -hmm. carbon fiber based. Now, they didn't say that they were going to work together 
But they also said maybe BMW, because it is taking a new approach of how it's building the body of this car, Apple could also adopt that technology, maybe license that type of technology to them. They aren't working together, but they're definitely the two companies or the company that Apple is talking to in any idea of actually working a car. Apple's not talking to Tesla. Apple's uh, recruiting employees from all these different companies, Ford, GM, and Tesla, to build their car, but they're only actually talking to BMW. Hmm. I wonder why. I think it's a it's a good marriage from a standpoint of BMW does try to target that same quote unquote high end per percent not yeah. one percenters but let's say uh ten or fifteen percenters yeah out there that's their target market. Apple is like that. Don't make any mistake. Apple is not trying to appeal to the general consumer with their prices. Not yet. They're good. They've gotten better, but that at least from a mentality of the audience that they're trying to attract in their different in their different products. That that would align. Hmm. Even Mercedes Benz is even more than that. I remember back in the day when we used to work for Apple Retail, they had a poster uh, because Apple didn't have much market share at the time. Yeah, and so to kind of let their employees know that yes, we are cool, they they had this poster that said three. Per, you know, Apple may have three percent of the market share, but so does Mercedes Benz. <laughs> we're we're we we're, we are making the best products possible. Hmm. And everyone in there that walked in the store would be like, yeah, they're right, they're right, three percent, baby. 3%. So uh, we'll see how this all shakes out. Apple's car is supposed to be coming out, or at least rumored to be released in 2020. That's a long time out. I don't know if I would that get into it. a long time. I don't know if... I, well, here's the thing. By that... See, Tesla is so far ahead of the game right now. They are. And yes, this is not... A, see, the, the thing about it is when Apple came into the phone game, they put out a product that was like two years ahead of everyone else. Yeah. I feel that's what Tesla is right now. They're two two to three years ahead of everyone else, if not more. So they're going to have to, if Apple's going to try and make something more compelling by 2020, they're going to have to leapfrog what Tesla is doing by two to three to five years as well. I don't know if they could do that. I'm just a little bummed that they're not talking to American car makers because Apple is an American company, right? Yeah, Apple is an American company. So why won't they deal with American cars? Are American cars not as cool, Apple? What's the deal with that, buddy? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> what are you going to get? A GM? A Dodge! Or a BMW? A Dodge. The iDodge? The iDodge. Dude, the iDodge. <laughs> there you go. Oh, oh the iDodge. It might. Yeah. That, that sounds totally sexy. Yeah. I also, I mean, I don't know. Volkswagen seems like it would be a good fit because their cars kind of yeah. have like an Apple. Audi? Audi? Audi. Yes. Audi. But, you know, I don't know. I'm just dreaming. They're, you know, they're all, they're all, they're all friends. The Apple Honda. You know the thing about it. There's going to be no original name about this thing. It's going to be called the Apple Car. <laughs> yeah. Like it's totally generic. Apple Car. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Okay, guys and gals, uh, we do like to solicit your voicemails on this show. One eight hundred six one six two six three eight is the phone number. Uh, we got a little message from our friend Cool Keith, so we're going to listen to him and see what he has to say or what he has to ask us. Hey, my name is Koo Keith, and I just want to know if buying the Apple Watch is it really, really, really worth four hundred dollars for the sports uh, model forty two uh, model band, or do I just need to hold off or try to pebble time a whole lot cheaper? Uh, just want to ask this question. Please let me know. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Kuki, I after hearing that voicemail, I think it might be Kuki, Kuki, not cool, <laughs> not cool key. Okay, Kuki, like he's Kuki. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, uh, this is Kuki, Kuki, Kuki. I like. Are we going? Should he go for a pebble time because of the price? Uh, I would. I the hard thing for me to say, and I don't know what you think on this Beecham is. It's never. I never want to say. Oh. This is worth your money because everyone kind of throw, you know uses their money in different ways. There's yeah. things that people that I buy that people are like. Why would you buy that crap? Yeah, like I don't care about that now. But if we're looking at the entire landscape of what's out there in the smart smart watches, based on how I use my Apple Watch, and bottom line is I don't like to get annoyed with all these notifications. Everyone who's telling who says that the Apple Watch like makes them use their phone less, they might be true, but they're getting way less information and they're they're getting way their their interaction levels have become very simplified. I'm not one of those persons that said Apple Watch take over my life. I think the people that like them sh wanted the Apple Watch to take over their life, and it maybe it has. Maybe, maybe. But from a value standpoint, I don't think it's 
the sport watch for me is worth 400 bucks. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I, smart watches in general, I've, I think they're all like just too big and there's not enough functionality with them right now. So, I mean, maybe save your money till something like perfect comes out in a couple of years. You know, they're only going to get better. Look, Apple is uh, their new watch. OS two is getting some improvements. Native apps will be the best thing about it. Current apps that have to load from your phone take forever forever sometimes as long as 13 seconds i know first that is problem. a long time a long time 13 seconds by that time i could open my phone up uh play angry birds and then finish around and put it back in my pocket yeah you could so i'm happy with my casio here geo shock g-shock g-shock it baby. tells the time it has the date j-shock <laughs> <laughs> i also the fitness stuff I think there was a survey of people that were using the Apple Watch. Most of them worked out a little more, but for unless you're committed to really drastically changing your life, don't tell the Apple Watch can help. The watch but is not yeah, do the it. watch is not the reason. <laughs> Only you are gonna do it. Exactly. Getting your butt to the gym, like me and Brian, we try to go to the gym every day. I see him. <laughs> I see him. Go, <laughs> you know, it's not our watch isn't telling us to go. No, it's not at all. And I'm not. I turn off the feature of my watch telling me to sit, stand up. Like oh, it doesn't. Really? If you don't stand up at every hour, it says stand up. Huh. I don't need that. When you're watching a movie, it went off twice during the movie, and I said, this is trash. Yeah. Turn that off. Steps for any device are very uh, – it's not, it's not accurate. accurate. It's not you know, accurate. So you get a rough idea. Yes, I get it. But after you use it for about two to three weeks, you kind of know how many steps you take, so you stop really using that. Yeah. Um, I think just the watch category, I mean, I'll say this forever until something blows me away. It still has a long ways to go. Do I like my watch? Yes, because I like how it looks. I'm still wearing it, but I don't, you know. It looks cool. I paid for that crap too, though. <laughs> I didn't. Apple didn't buy this for me. Cena didn't buy this for me. I paid for this crap, so it's not. It's not crap. I'm just saying. You everyone... quote him on that. He paid for this crap. <laughs> I paid. <laughs> Meme. Impact. Font. I paid for this crap. Yeah. So I paid for this. <laughs> it's all right. Six out of ten is my is my uh, honest opinion of it. Six out of ten, right now. That's pretty good. So good, not great. Probably not worth it. I think if they drop the sport down to two fifty, I think that's worth it. Two fifty. Two fifty to three hundred is worth yeah. it for the sport. One ninety nine, possibly. That's my one ninety nine might be a little too low just because it's Apple. But and two... if they get a video camera on there, you could watch videos. <laughs> oh no, that model will be five hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 so and yes, there is an update coming. Uh it's just watch OS two will be coming out sometime this fall. It adds a few new features. You can, I think the funniest one is using your watch as an alarm clock, mm. dude. It's so small. <laughs> it is so small. You can't read. You can't tell me you're going to reach over and hit a button at like 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. No, I totally use my phone as an alarm clock. Do you use your phone? Oh, I totally use yeah. my phone. No one uses alarm clocks anymore. No, I actually, actually I scratched that. I do have an alarm clock as a backup. <laughs> like I literally do. It's cool. It's all right. Okay, let's get to kind of some of the couple of fun stories that we have lined up here for the show. You may have heard of this. You may have not. Everyone knows about Deflate Gate, Tom Brady. So ridiculous, man. So ridiculous. I don't even need to go into the details of it. But one of the aspects of the story that makes it fun is the fact that reports say that Tom Brady, quote unquote, destroyed his cell phone. But there's okay. more to it. Okay, no, don't play this I've yet. Heard I want to play this too. Okay, okay don't play this yet. Yeah, we'll play this for we'll play this for sound after this. Okay. So according to Tom Brady, he said he actually ditched his broken Samsung phone and got an iPhone 6. He turned over his cell phone records and everything the NFL asked for him. He didn't there was nothing necessarily hidden on his phone and honest and at the same time, he doesn't have to turn over his entire phone over to the NFL. By law, he doesn't have to just They were subpoena it. Were, was it like a subpoena or something? Yeah, we, they okay. were asking yeah, they were asking for it, but he, you know, it wasn't. This was not a criminal case. This was a private investigation by a private uh, organization. Okay. Anyways, he broke. His said his Samsung phone was broken, and his iPhone wasn't. So we thought that because this was really almost like goodwill falling in Apple's lap, maybe Apple should make some sort of promotional ad for Tom Brady. So let's just see what we were able to put together. Hey Tom, you've won four super. Hey Tom. You've won four Super Bowls, three Super Bowl MVP awards, and two league MVPs. You know when your balls are perfect. And of all people, you should know. If it's not an iPhone, it's not an iPhone. 
Yeah. You should know when your balls are perfect, Tom Brady. Yeah. Why didn't he know that his balls were perfect? <laughs> no, he knew. He knew. He knew what he was doing. Anyways, Tom Brady has an iPhone 6 now. Just for all of you that were wondering why he had a Samsung Galaxy phone or why he didn't have an iPhone, he's on board with Team iPhone 6. Well, I heard, to, to add a little to the story, I heard that he, bra- that he destroys his cell phones regularly. It's a security precaution. He's smart. Right? So he, when, the, when they came asking him for the phone, he's like, oh, I already broke that. It's like, it's all good. Oh, yeah. He just started destroying his phones after Deflategate regularly. <laughs> no, I think he was doing it. I think he's been doing it for years. It's just something he does. So I wonder how he does it. You know, does he have a tool in his house? Like microwaves like, it who knows? and then hammers it. Does, yeah. Does he ha- drive a spike through it or something? Like, what Microwave to kill all the circuits, <clears throat> hammer, and then water. I think that's a pretty efficient combination. Probably. We've got a microwave that you got to kill the data and then yeah. get rid of get rid of everything on the cloud. <laughs> get rid of everything. On the yeah, cloud. there's a movie about that. <laughs> All right, wrap this up, guys, on the Apple White Extra Crunchy. My favorite story of the week, teen years. Oh my goodness, this is. I'm so. Stoked. I don't. I don't know what you think about this. I, so, for example, music listeners, people that like Dr. Dre, people that don't, I don't care who you are. But if you like him, you're on my boat. If you're down with Doctor, you're 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 on this boat. Okay, so he's had this album in the works called Detox, long rumored, supposed to be the follow up to The Chronic, which is arguably one of the one most of the iconic, classic. iconic classic the albums classic, in rap history. Yes, not just rap history, in music history. history. It's like one of the greatest albums ever made. Whew. That was like our soundtrack Whew. in high school, man. Oh, man. Seriously. Amazing, amazing stuff. So he is going to base, inspired by the NWA biopic that you've seen ads for straight out of Compton. He is now releasing this new album 16 years later. Compton, a soundtrack by Dr. Dre is what it's called. We're just going to play a little soundbite of uh, him making the announcement because we just think this is super hot. It was announced on Beats One's radio during his pharmacy podcast. This is Beats One. This is the pharmacy with Dr. Dre. I was leaving the set, coming to the studio, and I felt myself just being so inspired by the movie. That I started recording an album. What? And I kept it under wraps. Come on. And the album is finished. Oh! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's inspired by album. It's inspired by Straight Outta Compton. Yes. We're going to call the album Compton, the soundtrack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And, um, oh, wow. Cube is on the album. Yeah. 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 Cube came in. He went bananas on the Absolutely. record. Kendrick Lamar's on yes. the record. Absolutely. Eminem is on the record. Snoop Dogg is on the record. Yes. All my friends came in, and we all came together to build this thing. And it's going to be my grand finale. And the record is bananas. You what? Oh. The blogs just went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it. Yeah. Brand new music. Woo. Compton coming from. Yeah. Yep. Compton coming. <laughs> we had to. We had to match the hype. No, it's this is spectacular. Uh, it will. Release on August the 7th. It will only be available on iTunes and Apple Music. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. Because one of the things that, although whether you love or hate Apple Music, it's all about getting exclusive artists on these new music services. Apple's been able to get exclusive tracks from like Eminem, Pharrell, Nine Inch Nails. Uh, they have Taylor Swift, obviously. Now they're getting Dr. Dre's final album exclusively on iTunes. That's a big deal. Guest stars on this album, Eminem, Snoop Dogg. Kendrick Lamar, Ice Cube. Who's not going to buy this? I got to get it. <laughs> I'm not even trying to kiss his butt. It's This is, no, it's this exciting. is, this is awesome. an exciting thing. Music fans, hip-hop fans, yes. rap fans. This is exciting. 16 years. What was that, when was the last one he did? Like 1990? It would have been technically the... It's been like 95, 94? I forget what it was called, too. Was it the next episode? Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. This is awesome. So... Anyways, fans or people who just want to listen or who don't care, I'm just telling you, Dr. Dre's coming back with his final album, uh, and it will be exclusively on iTunes. Pretty sick. Totally sick. All right, guys and gals, uh, I think that's what that's going to do it for this week's show. We've had a nice run with you. We'll be back next week. Extra crunchy, Stephen Beecham, Brian Tong doing it again for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. We'll see you. Peace. I was trying to look up Dr. Dre's last album, which was. Um, Thank you, everybody, for watching. 2001.
That's right. 2000, 2001. Was, dang. Remember that one's like an all white album. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Was that was that um, was that what where next episode was on? Um, I think so. Hold up. All right, everybody on Periscope. Thanks so much for watching. We're just gonna wrap up the show here. So, uh, we are still here. Tada, STW. If you guys have any questions you want to ask us right now, we're just going to chill for the next couple minutes, but then we have to go. Uh, but if you guys have any questions that you want to just ask us in general about life, love, Apple. Nate Dog was on that album. Didn't he die recently? Yeah, he did. Oh, my God. An exhibit? Remember exhibit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's still around. He's still around. How do I get my hair up? Who's asking that? Michael C. Morris 9? Natural. It's natural. It's All natural. natural. <laughs> All natural. Okay. Well, look. Ugh. Do we? Hit, we were just basically at thirty minutes again, huh? Yeah. You kind of hit it right on the nose every time. It's funny. Why don't you all put good apples in the show? Well, not every story is good. Not every story is super bad. We only really called off. It's just like idiotic bad. I mean, I'm not. I'm not here to kiss their butt. Honestly, I mean, are we fans of technology? Yes, but. Do we have to tell Apple when they're doing good all the time when they already tell that to the world? No. <laughs> no. No plans for Google's extra <laughs> – any plans for Google-licious extra crunchy? <laughs> no plans yet. We're just getting this ramped up. Do you think iOS 10 is going to be called iOS 10? You mean – well, they call iOS – they call iOS X. They refer to it as 10 still. It's not X. Uh, do you have to buy music when you're paying for Apple Music? The answer is No as long as the tracks are on the Apple Music service. So what makes that tricky is that you can pay for the uh, $9.99 subscription, but there are still songs that are not part that you might find on the iTunes store that are not, not part of Apple Music. There's no defined list on that. So uh, the answer is no. Do I use Apple Music? Right now I do because it's free, but when it expires, I personally will not be using it that much. Actually, I won't. I, I'll have it. For, for me, I have to do it for review purposes, but because of the way... It deals with iTunes match, or it, it basically matches your collection, replaces artwork. Sometimes, you know, messes a lot of that up. I'm not, I'm not willing to trust it, and it's still happening. So it messed a lot of my artwork up too. I hate that. That's pissed me it off. Totally sucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, did you have a backup so that you could revert back, or you kind of just no, dealt with it? I just dealing with it. Yeah. Did any of your songs? About a year ago, I just I went crazy and I organized all my iTunes. That's what I did. Like, I went nuts. Yeah. Like and I just super anal or got rid right? of all duplicates, <laughs> like everything. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And now it's like all screwed up again. I was, I did before I did the upgrade. I did back up like an XML file and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was nervous about it. I can't even. I'm That's good. Go. Yeah, we did a prize by matchup. Uh, right now we give Spotify the edge for sure, but just more than anything, two main reasons. Spotify has a free version of their service. You can't really beat that. And then the way that it deals with matching your music, Spotify integrates your current music. It doesn't try to replace it or uh, take control of it, which is what Apple Music does. And by default, Stephen and I, we've talked about it before. We're not uh, – we like having our own music. I, I don't – I'm still not comfortable. Well, like what sucks is if I stop the service and then all those playlists and all those songs that I created are gone. Like that's just lame. I just like buying the songs that I really like. <laughs> I, I I do use Amazon Prime Music though all the time. Oh, you do? Yeah, I love it. It's because you dumped off all your music and then restored it. Yeah, I mean, because I only really use that on my i on my iPad, but um, you know, it's just it's really easy to search something and there it is. Boom. It's funny, like <laughs> I gave my kids a bath and I kept singing "So Fresh and So Clean." You know, I thought it was just funny. <laughs> and I opened up Apple Music, searched it real quick, I had "So Fresh and So Clean" right away. It was probably oh. listening to you, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's scary. That is super scary. Um, where are we going to be next week and what time? You mean for this? Well, I got to figure out my schedule. I got to talk to you about that. Okay. We'll figure that out. Yeah. I love, I love that people we don't know we that. We could do it later Friday, too. Yeah. That might work better because I have a shoot in the morning that I'm going to be away from the office for. Okay, Periscopers, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to shut this down, but we appreciate it. Appreciate all your uh, – 
Vaka Kajip. I'm not going to actually answer that. Hey, someone called me their favorite Asian guy. Yay. I hope there's more than that. There's a lot of Asian people in this world. Okay, we'll see you all, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. From the top to the bottom. From the top. <laughs> from the top. <laughs> all right. See you guys. <clears throat>